Hi, today I'm going to start a new sequence of courses where we start by designing a digital filter in MATLAB, create HDL using the MATLAB HDL coder, and then import the Verilog into the Cadence design system using Genus to synthesize the Verilog, and finally Innovus to do an automatic place and route of the Verilog function. So we're going to start uh, using MATLAB filter objects. So right now uh, I'm doing an interpolate by four and I'm using the DSP.FIR interpolator that's built into MATLAB. This is a standard interpolator and all that it's doing uh, is upsampling uh, by a factor L, in our case four, and then it will filter using an FIR filter. There is standard syntax that goes along with this. I'm not going to go into it. The main things that we care about with the FIR interpolator are the number of taps and the filter bandwidth. You can uh, put this in an automatic mode. Uh, here, I'm using a filter bandwidth of 0.24, uh, which corresponds to the sample rate of the or the, sorry, the bandwidth of the signal of interest uh, divided by the sample rate at the interpolated frequency. Uh, in my case, uh, we did some iteration to find that uh, 0.24 uh, worked best in terms of the uh, EVM of the signal uh, at the output. Uh, and then we also uh, have the number of taps for the filter. In my case, it's going to be 256. Uh, this was also iterated to find the best choice. So, we generate in this code a MATLAB signal. Uh, this is all a MATLAB signal uh, for Wi-Fi. Uh, it's an MU MIMO, uh, sorry, it's an SU MIMO signal. Uh, and uh, we input this to the interpolation filter uh, and then we get the output. Uh, we have the built-in receiver uh, that I've modified a little bit uh, in order to be able to determine the fidelity uh, of the filter uh, or the signal after the filter. So here, I'm going to uh, demonstrate this. All right, so if we run our code, we'll see the output constellation of the filter. You can see here, this is a 4K QAM constellation and it looks pretty nice. You can also see the EVM as a function of subcarrier. You can see that it's around minus 80 dB. So it's a very good EVM, very low error, as we'd expect from a good interpolator. Uh, and a window that popped up also showed that it's meeting the spectral requirements. If you're unsure of how your interpolator is doing, you can uh, change the bandwidth, change the number of taps, change the interpolation rate, do all those kinds of things, but we're not going to do that for now. The next step that we have uh, is we're going to use the generate HDL command in MATLAB. So here uh, we're using FIR interp, which corresponds to the filter name that we created earlier. Uh, I'm going to give it a name, uh, in this case, my filter, but we could give this something a bit more unique if we wanted to. Uh, I prefer to work in Verilog, so I give it a target language of Verilog. Uh, I want it to generate a test bench so that I can test the Verilog. Uh, and I want it to have a specific test bench stimulus, which is the input waveform uh, that I'm providing. Uh, to the filter. The data type is a, a fixed point uh, signed input uh, with 12 fractional bits and one signed bit. Uh, so I'm using numeric type 1, 13, 12. Uh, and finally, I'm giving it a test bench name of my test bench. All right, so I stopped the code before generation uh, at that point, but now let's go ahead and put a new breakpoint and we'll run it up to that point. And what you'll see is as the code executes, it will start generating the Verilog for the filter, and then ultimately it will also generate the test bench Verilog. All right, it's done generating the stimulus file, and in just a moment it will also finish generating the test bench.
it's a fairly large number of samples that we're taking, uh, which is why the test bench generation is taking a bit longer. All right, you can see now that it's done. It's created uh, a filter. So here's myfilter.v. This is the Verilog. Uh, this is basically just going to look like a bunch of wires that will take in uh, uh, different coefficients uh, to do the uh, FIR multiplication, uh, and, uh, and, and then it will just look like a bunch of multiplications, uh, additions, and delays, which is what uh, an FIR filter primarily is. If we look at the test bench, you'll see that it's basically just going to instantiate uh, the filter that we just built. And then it will apply the test vector that we had it right as well. It's just taking a bit to load the test vector because it's so large. Now, what we're going to do next in the next video is we're going to take the test bench. Uh, we're going to run the test bench in a Verilog simulator uh, to make sure that the input values are giving us the expected values uh, that we're looking for. Uh, and if they are, we're going to go to the initial stage of synthesis. And in that stage of synthesis, what we're going to do is look to see if the, uh, if the uh, synthesizer is able to synthesize the logic in such a way that it can close timing uh, to make sure that you can meet the setup time requirements and hold time requirements of the system. All right, we'll do that in the next video.